I think everybody goes to a community college or a junior college for different reasons. In my case, it was really just to kind of mature. I was the skinny 165 pound quarterback that wasn't really, really ready for big time football. And there's others who come here because they need to work on their grades. So kind of everybody has a different reason, or in some cases, two years is all you need for whatever you know, you're choosing for your career. Um, but I, I wanted to play football. I think the best advice for community college student athletes or student students uh, is, is be into what you're doing. My coach, Coop Redder, you know, told us, I remember the meeting when it happened, it was out in the gym and, and he knew a lot of people were wondering like, why am I in a community college? How come I'm not already you know, at a big school or whatever? And, and he made the point that whatever you're doing, make that your big time. And I think that applies to anybody, anywhere and whatever they're doing, you know, college or not. You have to be into the moment because if, if you're thinking you're just getting through this idle time and oh, something better is going to come later, you're not really going to get there if you didn't do much in that other time. You're going to be wasting your time. So make the most of what's right in front of you. And maybe this quarter is not as important as next quarter, but make it the best it can be. And I remember distinctly the, the UNLV recruiting coach came here to see me. He was going to look at film and see me throw at practice. And my job, he had like a little student athlete job, was to give out parking tickets. And I ended up giving him a ticket, not knowing obviously that's who I was giving it to. So got off to a bad start with that. But UNLV recruited me, as did a few other schools. And UNLV ended up dec deciding to go with this other kid for scholarship. But comparing the other schools to what I liked about UNLV, I decided to go there and walk on anyway. And we had kind of a small communications department, but it was great for me. And, and again, I kind of relied on something Coach Cooperwriter had said about making wherever you are your big time and made the most of it. I, I took all communication and political science and English and, and everything directed toward what I ended up you know, going into. Uh, we had a little school campus station that had one TV set. Everybody had to gather at one TV set on campus to watch it. So it wasn't quite like you know big time colleges today with their internet shows and everything else, but there was no internet. so, uh, Or at least I wasn't advised of one. But I got the most out of that. I knew where I wanted to go, but I didn't know precisely what it would be. And ended up, before getting into TV, I actually had a tryout with the Seahawks, but I failed the physical because of that. I broke it at UNLV and now I'm 55 and it is what it is. So that's the way it goes. It looks worse than it is. Like it doesn't hurt right now. I kind of have good days and bad days, but I wasn't going to be Joe Montana, but I think I was as good as the other rookies that Seattle had in there. Like I thought I would have at least, you know, competed, but they didn't want to take a risk on somebody who wasn't a star in college if you're already beat up. So I got a TV job like a week later in the Seattle area, little KSTW, the independent station. We had a Monday through Friday news operation. Our, our joke was if there's news on the weekends, it's news to us. But they eventually added a weekend show and they said, well, you played football, why don't you do the sports? And I had no intention of, of covering sports. So I start doing the weekend sports, doing the Mariners and the Seahawks and all these fun things. And I just kind of shifted my direction toward, I think I want to go after a sports reporting career instead. ESPN was kind of rising up at the time, you know, they'd only been on the air for seven, eight years at the time, and I started sending tapes to them and got a tryout there, but I didn't get hired. For some reason, I quit my job, and I went through sort of a tough period. I was assembled garbage cans, I sold prepaid legal insurance as a telemarketer, um, and then I got a job in sales for a telephone uh, long-distance carrier, MCI, and all that time, though, I was still trying to be back in TV and specifically with ESPN. So it seemed like sort of a, a fool's errand at the time, but about four years I chased that and freelanced for them. Every time they'd have a big event in Seattle, they'd call me to you know, be the pickup guy. And eventually they added ESPN too, and apparently they were desperate, and I was the next hire. Like, I think it just came a time where they were looking for more people, and at least I had proven that you know, I was into it, and they knew enough about me that they gave me a chance, and here we are 21 years later. I, I don't really, I can't really think of a period at ESPN that hasn't been fun because doing Sports Center, which I'm doing again now, you're working with people you like and you know just watching games and saying silly things. It's it's funny that it's even a job sometimes to think I watch games for a living and make abs absurd remarks at 10 o'clock at night and go home and do it again the next day. I think I learned some good skills here because I followed sort of where I was headed already. And my mom was really big on reading and writing. And, you know, we were, we were like a family that communicated a lot at dinner and 
watch the news together. And like, I just kind of like always had an appreciation for words and communication and current events. And when I got here, I immediately kind of followed the same path. I was doing the journalism and uh, taking uh, speech classes and English classes and kind of everything was always directed toward where I wanted to go. I didn't know precisely where that would be, but I was, I never felt lost. Like I, I felt right from day one here, I was doing things that were kind of building me up to go forward and take the next classes that would get me to the next level. So I never felt any wasted time other than math for everyday living, which didn't transfer to UNLV. But I do still have a checkbook register. I think I might be the only one in the world who physically writes down checks. I don't do it on the computer. I don't trust it. I think it's great that there's been a new emphasis about community college because a lot of people, A, can't afford to go to the four-year or they don't want to be saddled with the debt that it takes to get through a four-year education. And for certain jobs, two years is what you need you know, to show that you applied yourself for that time. You get a degree in a certain category or, or maybe just a generalist degree, but at least you put in the time because so many employers are going to look at 10 candidates and wonder, well, who's put in some effort already? You know, maybe this person could pull it off, but this person already showed they applied themselves. And I think sometimes it's just like my daughter takes calculus. I don't really know that she's going to use calculus all that much in her life later, but I always tell her on it's like learning how to learn because whatever job you end up doing, you're going to have to learn a new thing at that job. And maybe they're going to have a whole transformation at your company and everybody has to get into a new way of doing things. And if you've practiced learning, the next time you have to learn something, you've had a better experience at it. So I, I think community college is great. And I, I, they make it more affordable for more people to get a higher education, but not necessarily go all the way through the four years if they don't need it. Yeah, I was just thumbing through uh, health and fitness in uh, January of 1996. I stopped my subscription to that, so I didn't see this one. And here's Coach Cooperwriter teaching aerobics. He looks younger back then. And he said he kept doing it all the way until he got too old to do it. And then he stopped. <laughs>